Hi, this video demonstrates a transconjunctival retractor reinsertion combined with Bix procedure for the surgical correction of involutional ectropion. This patient was referred to me by one of my esteemed colleagues for surgical treatment. A week later, the patient contacted me and even during that short period, I noticed that his left eye had worsened. At the beginning, it's essential to check for lower eyelid laxity. Let me show you a few of the tests we use to evaluate it. Incredible, okay? Coincidentally, on the same days, Rick Caesars, a leading figure in oculoplastic surgery and the creator of an outstanding YouTube channel, released a video demonstrating the modified Bix technique. I thought this technique might be suitable for my patient, so I began researching it on PubMed. An article by Kaveh Vahdani, a highly respected oculoplastic surgeon, was extremely helpful. I had the pleasure of meeting him at the Vsopras meeting in Istanbul. He kindly added me to his WhatsApp group, which is full of incredible discussions and posts about oculoplasty. Thank you again, Dr. Budani. In this study, the modified Bix technique showed better anatomical and functional outcomes with fewer complications compared to the traditional approach. I also strongly recommend Dr. Bobby Ascorn's book to anyone pursuing oculoplastic surgery. I had the privilege of meeting him at the same congress, and I truly believe his video book is one of the finest educational resources available. As you can see, the distraction test suggested the Bix procedure alone wouldn't be sufficient, so I decided to add a retractory insertion to my surgical plan. The goal of this surgery is to shorten the retractors by cutting them just below the tarsus and reattaching them to the lower border of the tarsus, allowing the eyelid to rotate inward with greater strength. Fortunately, my friend Kubra Ceylanoğlu assisted me in this case. A 4 to 5 mm ellipse of conjunctiva is outlined just below the inferior tarsus border, extending from the lateral canthus to the punctum. Care is taken to avoid injury to the tarsal plate and the inferior punctum during excision. Once the conjunctival ellipse is removed, the lower eyelid retractors are identified. Similar to the levator aponeurosis of the upper eyelid, they appear as a broad white band. Cutter is used to make an incision through the lower eyelid retractors at the inferior border of the tarsus. Using Westcott scissors, about 2 to 3 mm of the lower lid retractors are then excised. To ensure correct identification, the retractor's band is gently held under traction while asking to the patient to look up and down. True retractors will move with the globe. It's important to distinguish this from the orbital septum since confusing these two can lead to postoperative eyelid retraction after reinsertion. The lower eyelid retractors are then reattached to the inferior tarsal border along with the conjunctiva using a seminal vacuum suture. To prevent corneal abrasion, the first suture pass is made from the inferior to superior through the retractors so that the knot remains buried. After the retractors are reinserted, 
the eyelashes often appear vertically oriented due to long-standing aversion. Over time, they usually return to their normal outward curvature. If frank entropion develops, the reinsertion sutures can be recessed. This step can also be performed in a running fashion. Now it's time to move on to the Bix procedure. The procedure begins with excision of triangular wedge from the lower eyelid margin, followed by fixation of the released tarsal plate to the preostium of the lateral orbital rim. Suture fixation to the orbital rim should be positioned at the same level as the upper eyelid crease. The lateral wedge is then excised using scissors. The orbital rim is exposed using the same instrument. This can also be done gently with Q-tips. Next, a double arm fifoproline suture is passed vertically through the tarsal plate. Each arm is directed through the corresponding point of the upper eyelid before being passed beneath the orbicularis to exit at the lateral orbital rim. At this stage, the needle tip should make contact with the bone to ensure that the suture passes through the preostium. Finally, the suture is securely tied. A 6 of vicral suture is then used to close the orbicularis and the skin. Don't be misled by overcorrected appearance right after surgery. The eyelid will settle and droop a little as healing progresses. Thank you for watching.